the two of them. Oh, it's contact. It's contact. And there's contact between Cheryl Paul and Gumball Pilly. Good afternoon, it is, it is now here in North Wales and welcome to round seven of the 2024 Daniel Ricciardo series here from GYG. I'm Ben McPhillips, it's going to be a thrill to take you through the day's action here and uh, it's safe to say that from my own personal perspective, there's any circuit uh, that has really... Uh, been a highlight to look forward to it is this one here at GYG that the nature of the racing here so exciting such a really a, a circuit layout of contrast the huge dragon straight going up the hill and then the twisty section towards the end of the lap brings about a, a nature of racing where you really need to time your overtakes plan them out a good half a lap ahead in advance uh, and certainly with the weather playing have it will it won't it uh, at the moment, it seems like it's holding off, but you never do know. Touch wood, uh, we at least get a safe day, uh, if nothing else. So if we do indeed get some rain, uh, then it should produce some excellent racing either way. Uh, we Still, not a situation where you're looking at putting the wet tyres on yet by any means. So we get ready now for our DRS 125 heat race and Sam Faulkner is on pole. Of course, Charlie Ratford is not here this weekend. So Faulkner's usual main rival, uh, not having to be contended with but there is certainly a lot of expectation around freddie cox who uh, did make a brief return earlier on in the season at risington and is back here once again at gyg and uh, cox was second in qualifying some three tenths behind faulkner uh, and uh, th there was some suggestion that because uh, sam faulkner during some of the practice sessions just so was following uh, Freddie Cox around the circuit and I think he uh, he understood that Cox was going to be his main threat this weekend and uh, just following him to, to, to keep an eye on where he was quickest and certainly now knows what he's up against. He's also potentially up against Jack Clayton, who's made an excellent return from his big accident at Landau. And Carl Watt, an impressive fourth, continuing to improve uh, recently is Carl Watt. There is a problem for, uh, we're gonna go back round one more time. There is a problem. Uh, can't see who it is that's uh, stuck out there by the final corner. So we'll see that in a moment on the street if you're not already so it's a 60 mark lawrence that was uh, in trouble there and he now has gotten back going and so with any luck we'll have a start this time by so as we mentioned Faulkner on pole alongside Freddie Cox. And it's Jack Clayton and Carl Watt on the second row. Uh, some names that are further back than we would expect them. Uh, Oscar Wormsey Jones back in ninth was well in contention for victory at uh, Landau before he and Kurt Fordry uh, came together. Fordry uh, in 11th for this one. Meanwhile, up in seventh place, Finley Anderson continues his good run of form. Of course, he was the leading uh, novice plate at Landau with a sixth place finish. And here, qualifying seventh, that's an excellent result for him. They're coming into the final corner now. We wait for Sam Faulkner to get us underway in this one as he will command the field to the green. Freddie Cox trying to get the run on the outside, much like Xander Hughes did at the start of the previous race. But Faulkner holds the lead as they go up the Dragon straight for the first time. Cox positions himself to the outside, then looks towards the inside, but Faulkner with the defensive line uh, holds on to the lead for the moment. Cox looks towards the inside as they head back down towards the 
the carousel. There is, uh, there has been an incident further back. I'm not sure if there was a collision there, uh, but certainly there was one slow cart and one that got delayed uh, before carrying on. As Faulkner holds the lead, but certainly struggling through the uh, the elbow section with uh, Freddie Cox right behind him and Cox Wayne now had a good slipstream going up the hill though it's a good run through the final corner for Sam Faulkner that gives him a little bit of a lead there are some yellow flags out towards the top end of the Dragon Strait at the moment as we see the 335 and the 337 so uh, that's Finley Anderson and Thomas Dackens that were involved in an incident there but there's a yellow flag suggests that there's someone else that's hit trouble and we can't see them over the brow of the hill Either that or there is a, a piece of a cart maybe out on the circuit. Faulkner continuing to lead, but Freddie Cox continuing to shadow him closely for the moment. As back around they come for the second time. Jack Clayton holding on to third, but he's a second back. Got a small gap, however, to Cole Watts. There's uh, about six or seven drivers that are right together there. And there's Clayton in 339 that is leading them. Just trying to see from the far, I believe Clayton has been overtaken because he is not in third now. There's a uh, what has happened to Jack Clayton? Are we are we missing that? No. Ah, the reason we're confused there is because Clayton is a, a yellow plate now. So Clayton is still in third. Then fourth Archie Cole, who has passed Cole Watt on that previous lap, and in doing so has set the fastest lap of the race. Closest battle on the circuit appears to be for sixth place. That's between Tommy Welsh and Oscar Wormsley Jones at the moment. While Faulkner continues to just keep himself just out of reach of Freddie Cox at the moment, not pulling away by any means. And we watch Oscar Wormsley Jones at the moment as. Uh, he looks for the slipstream. Of course, Welsh will get the slipstream himself from Cole Watt ahead of him. There's no pass going in towards the spoon at the moment. Freddie Cox, however, has closed right in on Faulkner now. Going through the spoon curve that time by now. Cox looking towards the outside. To the inside going in towards compression. Faulkner doesn't quite feel the need to take the defensive line into compression. But the top two are now right back together. Faulkner looks like he's a little bit better through the elbow here as they come back round towards the final corner. Faulkner with that little buffer. I suspect that the reason that Cox closes up is because he's getting such a good run into Spoon. Here they come around once again, back up towards the, uh, the far side of the circuit, up the top of the hill. And yeah, Cox gets a really good run up the hill. And is there a move? No, not quite. Cox almost did, however, get out of shape at Spoon there. And he closes right back in. Not as close as he was on the previous lap, but certainly Sam Faulkner is not out of danger here. Still Jack Clayton in third, and now Clayton is the one that has the fastest lap. He's the only driver to get into the 42s so far in this race. And Freddie Cox looks a little bit closer going up the hill this time by. Faulkner not quite feeling the need to take the defensive line going into that right hand flick. But now he might make the move down the inside into Spoon. Not quite, he just backs out of it. Now Faulkner might need to take the defensive line into the carousel. Cox has got the inside. Freddie Cox will take the lead. Passing Sam Faulkner into the carousel. And that might be the first time this season that someone other than Charlie Ratford has overtaken Sam Faulkner. Cox, however, is struggling to get the run through the elbow section. And here they go back up the hill. And Faulkner might well be in striking distance. We've got some three minutes and 45 seconds to go. And Faulkner, for the moment, doesn't appear as if 
he's close enough to make the move. Even with the slipstream, Cut's getting a really good run up the hill. Very close battle now developing for third place. Jack Clayton having to defend from Archie Cole now. And on this particular lap, as they go through the twisty section, Freddie Cox has certainly pulled away. The gap was two tenths, and it is now four and a half tenths. So Sam Bogner is looking behind him. Uh, so Jack Clayton now closes to within less than half a second, and it's much less than that now as they head up towards Spoon. I wonder if maybe it's tricky to assess what this is for Sam Bogner because obviously here in the seniors, this is where the tire wear throughout the course of the day matters the most. We've not seen it be a factor in the races this year as it was last year. Uh, but I do wonder if maybe Faulkner is just trying to save some tires here. But there is also the possibility, of course, as Faulkner looks to be, there's an arm up from Sam Faulkner and he is pulling off right in front of us. So that explains the problem. Faulkner struggled here at GYG last year, but these struggles are not of his making. Sam Faulkner out of the heat race here at GYG. So it is Freddie Cox now that will be clear, and Jack Clayton will look to hold off. Archie Cole in a battle for second. And almost a move there from Cole, actually, as he uh, almost got the uh, the up and under going through the first part of that final complex. And now Clayton is going to be going very vulnerable going up the hill. Closing back in on them is Cole Watt in fourth place. Clayton not taking the defensive line yet. Uh, and in the end there, Cole just not quite able to get the run up the hill. But did he, did, he, did he make the pass? Clayton looks to have fallen back. I think there may well have been a mistake from Jack Clayton in Spoon that's allowed Archie Cole up in a second place. Freddie Cox, meanwhile, has pulled away. He is now almost two seconds ahead. And yes, up into second place has gone Archie Cole. So they look to, it looks as if there may well have been an error from Clayton going into Spoon on the previous lap. And now Carl Watt is looking to attack. Looking to the inside. Oh, that's a brave move going into that flip there into Spoon. He might have been better off waiting. And there is a yellow flag for an incident behind them. I wonder if that might well have been Oscar Wormsey Jones' white helmet there. Is that a single plate? It is indeed, I believe it was Oscar Wormsey Jones that was involved in an incident there. Not sure if there was contact or if he's dropped it over the top of the hill. So 20 seconds to go. Freddie Cox comes over line. They didn't declare last lap for six seconds last time. So they won't do it with 20 seconds this time, you would imagine. So it should be two laps to go. And it looks as if Cole Watt has gotten, yes he has, Cole Watt has indeed passed Jack Clayton for third and now the big battle is going to be behind for fifth, sixth and seventh Archie Potter, Kurt Fordry, Tommy Welsh Potter actually moved up two places to take fifth on the previous lap and now it'll be uh, Tommy Welsh's turn to attack so here we go, on to the last lap. Freddie Cox coming over the line. He's got a very comfortable lead now of two seconds from Archie Cole. And Cole Watt will look to hold off Jack Clayton for third. Just a quarter of a second between them. Clayton with a run up the hill. Can Clayton reclaim third place here? Watt gets a, a good run through Spoon as we look behind to see what's going on in the battle. The fifth, that three-way fight. Tommy Welsh is still looking for a way past Kurt Forgery, it appears, and it doesn't look like he's going to find a pass on this particular lap, although he does move to the inside into compression corner, but the door is shut. Freddie Cox now heading towards the final corner, and Freddie Cox claims victory in the heat race at GYG, all out of shape towards the start finish line, was Archie Cole in second, 
Cole, what a magnificent third. Jack Clayton in the end just couldn't quite hold on to second place with Archie Butter in the end taking fifth in the final couple of laps from Kurt Baudry who held off Tommy Welsh through the final lap. And Sam Faulkner once again, it is, even without Charlie Ratford being here, Sam Faulkner once again suffers a setback in the heat race that means he will have it all to do in the pre-final as Freddie Cox here has taken the win in the 125 heat race here at GYG for round seven of the 2024 Daniel Ricciardo series. Next up out on the circuit is going to be the DRS 45 heat race as we uh, just take a look at our schedule. So they are due out on circuit in five minutes from now. I uh, wonder if there may well be a slight delay. They are all out on the circuit and ready to go. So we'll have the 45 heat race coming up shortly. Next out on circuit is our DRS 125 pre-final. Um, just to clean up some uh, instance, incidents that took place in the DRS 100 heat, first and foremost, before we go back to racing. Uh, the, of course, it was Freddie Farrell that took the victory ahead of Kai Newman and Joe Jennings. Everything is as you would expect there. Uh, there was a penalty for Carter and Clarkson for uh, gaining an advantage via contact uh, that resulted in another driver coming to a halt. Uh, so that cost him four places. So he fell down from 10th to 14th. Liam Karabelov had finished 17th. Uh, he falls to 21st. Uh, and last, of course, uh, as a result of the same uh, penalty. He, of course, was involved in the incident with... Uh, Xander Hughes at the top of the circuit at Spoon uh, and that's why he got that penalty. It's not realistically a penalty of any substance for Carabell of that because of course uh, he drops points uh, from that race of course being his worst result of the season uh, in a heat race uh, or a pre-final so uh, while it does help Kai Newman slightly from a championship perspective, uh, of course, it does mean that Karabelov simply uh, drops points. Uh, so not too big of a blow. Of course, there are drop points for your worst heat results and your worst grand final result here in the Daniel Ricciardo series. As the 125 drivers are uh, underway and ready to get out onto the circuit. And uh, it's also worth noting that uh, Sam Faulkner, who, of course, had an engine failure in the in the heat he was using uh, 
his uh, IAMI engine. He switched to uh, his other engine, that, that he, we, uh, we understand he's not particularly a big fan of. So his performance may well be compromised even further. He certainly wasn't uh, cruising by any means in the heat race. He did have a good first couple of laps and that was when apparently his problems started to occur and that's when Freddie Cox started to close in. So uh, we don't, I guess we don't really know what Sam Faulkner's true pace ever was, uh, but certainly we're expecting his run through the field in this race to be compromised to some degree. Uh, so we're on our second uh, parade lap now and it is a chance uh, for Freddie Cox to make hay out front with Archie Cole in second, Cole Watt in third and Jack Clayton in fourth. Of course, the order in which they finished that heat race. No penalties in the 125s. As regards the weather situation, uh, we're, we're looking really to our east. It's sort of southeast. It's more... Uh, east and southeast, let's put it that way. Uh, and there does appear to be some weather, but I wonder if that's maybe just passing us maybe to the south slightly. Uh, the, the forecast says rain is absolutely guaranteed uh, after a certain point within the next half an hour or so. Uh, whether it occurs is anyone's guess because we were meant to have rain for most of the day. And we haven't yet had any apart from a few slight little drops that uh, really have not been of any consequence at all so we'll see what happens on that front and we're about to see what happens for the start of this DRS 125 pre-final and here we go Freddie Cox leading us across the line and taking the position into club corner and running up the hill with uh, Archie Cole all over the back of him looking for a way into the lead to start this one and not quite getting to the inside in towards the spoon curvis down they come uh, down the hill for the first time and around the carousel and the top two already pulling away a little bit from third place who i believe cole what would have held on to third as here they go around the elbow for the first time and it is, uh, it is Freddie Cox that will lead them over the line for the first time. Just trying to see if it is indeed Archie Cole. Yes, 3-3-8 three, three, there. And then 2-9-8. So that is Archie Cole, Cole Watt, 2-9-8. And then Jack Clayton, 3-3-9. Three, three, uh, so Cole is very, very close to attacking there, but not able to get down the inside onto turning. It is tough than it looks to make that move on the inside going into Spoon. And it's because that... The, the corner kind of falls away from you. Uh, it goes to the right. Right as you uh, enter the corner, you have to turn in very early uh, because there is a, a, a slight... The track does fall away just slightly to the right and then it really tightens up at the apex. It's a very late apex. So even though it is a hairpin, it's not exactly the easiest corner to make a pass compared to what you might think it is when you look at it on the screen. Uh, Kurt Forgery has made his way past Jack Clayton for fourth on the second lap here. And as they go up the hill for the third time, it does appear as if Freddy Cox has opened up a slight gap over Archie Cole. It's three tenths as they cross the line. It may be a little bigger. The battle further back in the pack is for fifth place. Jack Clayton, who was second early on uh, in, the, uh, in the heat after Sam Faulkner's retirement, fell back and is now falling back further into the clutches of Oscar Wormsley Jones. And it's Faulkner who is the third cart in that pack. I believe Faulkner has actually gotten past Wormsley Jones and is now lining up Clayton for a pass. And actually, here he goes, Faulkner into turn one on uh, Jack Clayton. That's going to compromise Clayton a little bit going up the hill. Meanwhile, the battle is for the lead going into Spoo. Archie Cole uh, moving in, but not able to make the pass, it appears. Clayton, meanwhile, able to hold on to sixth place ahead of uh, Oscar Wormsley Jones there as you watch Sam Faulkner as he moves towards the top four. Through the elbow, Cole looking to get some sort of up and under, just trying to take the wider line into the entry of those corners, trying to set himself up for an overtake going up the hill. Cuts his run up club corner, is very good. But you see Cole here closing in towards the right-hander, in towards a spoon.
but he's got enough of a gap that he doesn't need to take a defensive line into Spoon itself. Down the hill they come. And Cox, really good traction coming out of Spoon through that left-hander that takes you down the hill towards the, uh, the carousel there. And Sam Faulkner at the moment, last time over the line, was three seconds behind the leader. So he's got every chance of uh, making got that gap. He's making very good progress. Already getting through some uh, nine carts to put himself in position to battle. So Sam Faulkner, who said he didn't like this engine that's, that he's using now, uh, but you certainly wouldn't have guessed that just by looking at him out on the circuit. Once again, Fox is uh, ahead and doesn't feel the need to defend going into the spoon. It's uh, once again on this lap, Cox gets uh, not so good at the apex, but he gets a good run out and down the hill. Oh, and almost there, a move going in towards compression corner from Archie Cole and out of shape through the apex, but gathers it up well and doesn't lose too much time. So we'll be able to get back into position. Wide line on the exit of the final corner as they go back up the hill again. And there suggests that Cox gets a very good run out of the final corner to position himself up the hill and it's just about out of reach by the time they get to Spoon. Cox getting the run exactly as he needs it at the moment as Sam Faulkner makes the move on Kurt Baudry in Spoon for fourth place. And Faulkner on that previous lap, I believe, was a second faster than, uh, than Freddie Cox. Not quite. It was eight tenths of a second was the gap between them on that previous lap. That's a massive advantage over the course of a lap that's only just over 40 seconds. And here comes Faulkner now trying to make a move on uh, Cole Watt. I believe he actually, uh, yeah, I think he made the move too soon there, did Sam Faulkner. He lost the uh, he lost the momentum coming out of the final corner. And now, for the moment, Kurt Fordry is back on his tail. That won't last long, you would imagine. But Faulkner there probably lost about half a second trying to get past Cole Watt into the final corner. I think he might have been better off just being a little bit more patient there. Wouldn't have maybe found himself in a position where Watt was a bit slower going into that section than he thought would be the case. Watt very wide going in towards the elbow section there, the second corner of that, that, that quartet of corners. Watt was a bit wide and that's like Faulkner back onto his tail. Uh, two seconds the gap over the line as Faulkner looks to go outside then inside up the hill and he'll look for a move into Spoon and he makes it cleanly. I think he wanted to make it a bit earlier than he eventually got to but Sam Faulkner now is up into third place and out front Freddie Cox is pulling away slightly from Archie Cole. Cole was in position to strike on what, what, not quite in position to strike but certainly uh, close enough that Cox had to look over his shoulder, uh, but on this particular lap, Cox has pulled away a little bit. So here we go, over the line, the gap now is almost four tenths, and Sam Faulkner's on that lap, Sam Faulkner was six tenths faster than the leader. And from here, with two minutes and 15 seconds to go, you would imagine that Faulkner should be able to move in. Of course, one of the elements in Faulkner's performance here is that there are situations where he's benefiting from the toe. Uh, that will be part of the reason he is so much faster. Certainly, the biggest challenge lies ahead. And on this particular lap, Freddie Cox is uh, a bit slower as uh, Archie Cole closes right back in. But on the exit of the elbow complex, Cox is uh, a bit quicker. The gap on that particular lap is down to under three temps. So Cox may feel the need to defend here as they come out of the right hand, kink into the spoon. And here comes the move. Archie Cole looking for the lead, runs wide on exit, but I think he has it. Yes, Archie Cole taking the lead from Freddie Cox. And that has allowed Sam Faulkner to get right on the back of the pair of them. Now what Cole needs here is to build a big enough of a lead that he's out at the toe 
coming up the hill. He'll over Fault Faulkner makes the move immediately going into the final corner. But will that allow Cox to be right on him as they go up the hill? Let's see. Faulkner will have some of the slipstream from Archie Cole here. As they turn up the hill, I think Faulkner, well, Cox is going to send it, but I think he's too far back really, so he's to make the move. And now Sam Faulkner only has one more move to make. Just one more move and he'll be in the lead. And the gap last time over the line was four tenths. It looks to be about the same for the moment, but Faulkner so good through this final section. And uh, that was a very good line there actually from Archie Cole, but Faulkner is gonna make the same move he did on the previous lap. And Faulkner into the lead for the moment. They'll stay side by side. And then Faulkner will get the lead, go through the first corner. But is he vulnerable to a repass going up the hill? Cole is right there. Will he send it? He might do because it's his only chance of getting back ahead, you would think. Here they go. Not able to do it. Faulkner stays ahead. And he doesn't feel the need to go defensive into the carousel. And Sam Faulkner now is away. And you would imagine he is clear on this penultimate lap here of this pre-final at GYG. Sam Faulkner has come from last to first. And now the battle is very much going to be for second place between Archie Cole and Freddie Cox as they come back up the hill for the final time. Over the line, now up the hill. And does Cole have enough of a slipstream here to defend from Freddie Cox? I think Faulkner may actually be helping Archie Cole here. Not by design by any means. So through the carousel they go. Might be the last chance for Cox to make a pass here. But Cole is strong through compression corner. And the top three looks set to come across the line and the order they're in now. Sam Faulkner pulling away. And Sam Faulkner comes across the line from last to third for Sam Faulkner in the pre-final. And it is Archer Cole second, Freddie Cox in third, Cole Watt in fourth, Kurt Forgery in the end. Managing the gap past Jack Layton. I believe that move actually took place earlier in the race as Tommy Welsh comes home seventh ahead of Oscar Wormsley Jones with Jake Woodrow in ninth and Tuscany Groves in the end in tenth place. But a magnificent drive from Sam Faulkner in an engine that we were told he was not comfortable with at all. He goes from last to first to win. A magnificent result, but Archie Cole was in the frame throughout. And Freddie Cox in the end not able to repeat the pace that we saw from him in the heat race and so Faulkner rescuing his weekend with that terrific drive after engine failure in the heat and you'll see now the uh, the pre-final results on your screens for the one two fives and next up on the circuit should be because we're going to go in reverse order in terms of the 45s are going last for the heat they should then be the middle uh, for the pre-final so they will be next up with then the 100 pre-final to come after that. So next up on circuit are the DRS 45s for their pre-final.
So we are ready to go then for the last two races of the day. Our DRS 125 grand final is shaping up to start and we are well and truly now 100% in the wet conditions the changeable conditions with the rain just arriving caused absolute pandemonium at the end of that 45 arrive and drive grand final and we'll be hoping here that we get more of the same action uh, although maybe not in the same sort of way as uh, we get ready now for the start with Freddie Cox on pole our grid shows Archie Cole in second Cole Watt in third and Sam Faulkner in fourth but uh, here, it looks as if Sam Faulkner is on the front row. And uh, the 338 uh, is Archie Cole on the pole position. So I wonder if maybe they're not where they should be in terms of their starting positions. Because that... The way the grid formed up in that regard certainly does not match what we have in front of us. So, they were caused that that start was aborted. And we will make a second fist at getting this uh, 125 grand final underway. We are, of course, running a little bit behind schedule as a result of the rain arriving when it did, but it gave all of these owner drivers a chance to get onto the right tyre. And it does look as if Sam Faulkner has moved back into the correct position at this time, so that's why we had the full start. So here they go, and it is 3-3-2 on the pole freddy cox and archie cole and here we go we're racing and freddy cox gets all out of shape through club corner and faulkner could get up and under both of them and arms out i believe that is another aborted start and so yes they are now beginning to reform so it is indeed another aborted start and a second chance for Freddie Cox to get it right off pole position. Reggie struggling to get our, uh, our live timing at the moment, so clearly uh, There's uh, not just on the circuit there uh, battling against circumstances. So here we go. For the third time of asking, we look to get a start. Freddie Cox leads him down the first corner. And once again, he's out of shape in the... Well, not out of shape in the first corner, but he certainly didn't get a good run at all. But uh, Sam Faulkner moves into third and already contesting Lee going up the hill. And I think Cox has lost ground there. Is, uh, sees Archie Cole move ahead and Sam Faulkner will try and take second there through the spoon so it should be Archie Cole leading and uh, Faulkner a bit wide going through the carousel at least he's wide on the entry but through the exit he looks strong as a spray now beginning to come from these carts and they battle Further down the field, looks like Kurt Forger in about 7th or 8th place is trying to take a position. Sam Faulkner already capitalising on a mistake from Archie Cole through the elbow complex. And Faulkner is already into the lead and expect to see him scamper off into the distance now. And they're miles ahead already of Freddie Cox who has fallen back into the clutches there of the 3-3-9. That's Jack Clayton who has struggled for race pace throughout the day but may well be fighting for a podium in these wet conditions. So Faulkner holding the lead. It's a comfortable lead already. And then it is Archie Cole in second. Freddie Cox still defending third place, but continuing to fall back into the clutches of Jack Clayton. It is... Uh, was Tommy Welsh showing in fifth? I believe it still is indeed Welsh. Kurt Forgery is now looking to attack 
Oscar Wormsey Jones uh, in a fight for sixth place, and he gets alongside going in towards the elbow complex. Wormsey Jones has the inside for this next corner, but he has a little bit of a slide going through there. Faulkner's lead is already 1.8 seconds, and a move being made for four as Wormsey Jones gets past Jack Clayton. So Wormsey Jones actually gone by Tommy Welsh. It was Welsh that was defending from Kurt Fordrick, not Wormsey Jones. And now Fordrick going up the hill looks to have the position on Welsh, but Welsh tries to hold it around the outside, can't do it. And so uh, Fordrick there into what it should be sixth place. Clayton, meanwhile, has continued to hold position for Wormsy Jones, and I think there was contact there with Wormsy Jones and Jack Clayton, and Clayton spins out of the carousel and falls all the way to the back. That's misfortunate there for Jack Clayton, unless he dropped it by himself. But from the perspective we had, it looked like there was contact, as we see now that it's a huge gap and Wormsy Jones takes advantage of a mistake from Freddie Cox going through club corner Wormsy Jones trying to attack going up the hill but Freddie Cox for the moment will hold on to third place they don't quite go side by side through the spoon now Cox is looking to defend he takes a bit of curb going through that that left-hander there and then Cox defending with that wide line through the first part of the carousel So Jack Clayton continued on. He is now at the back of the grid, trying to uh, progress through as uh, they're side by side for third. I think Wormsey Jones, yes, going into the elbow complex. Wormsey Jones has taken third from Freddie Cox. And uh, an incident going through the elbow there. That might have been Finley Anderson. Couldn't tell who it was that he was involved in contact with, but whoever it was, they lost positions. So Faulkner leads, it's a 3.7 second gap back to Archie Cole. It is Oscar Wormsey Jones in third place. Uh, and Finley Anderson, yes, coming up with a contact warning on the screen. So it was indeed he involved in contact, I believe, with Tommy Welsh in a battle there for sixth place. Uh, and he, of course, is now the top novice because of Jack Clayton being involved in a spin. And Clayton there is making a move there past uh, Archie Potter for 11th place. Tuscany Groves, meanwhile, is out of this race due to an incident earlier on. Sam Faulkner's lead is now 4.8 seconds, and Oscar Wormsey Jones is 12 seconds off the lead. And now Freddie Cox is defending from Kurt Baudry for uh, fourth place. And uh, of course, if there was contact earlier on between Wormsey Jones and Jack Clayton, that will mean that the battle between Cox and Baudry is one that could be for a podium here. Cox again takes the curb on the left-hander at the exit of the spoon. Fordry, oh, Fordry gets it wide on the grass, but somehow holds onto it going into the carousel. That's incredible control there from Kurt Fordry, because I, that was a spin for sure. A spin that didn't happen, you might say, there for Kurt Fordry. And he's still on the tail of Freddie Cox, who has to compromise his line, going through the early part of the elbow complex. Wormsey Jones comes by us in third place. Freddie Cox through into club corner, struggles through there, but that actually, uh, he got wide, but it was actually his best run through there for some time. Uh, the 60 of Mark Lawrence, he's either a lap down or he's running a lot further up the order than normal. He is running a lot further up the order than normal. Mark Lawrence is in sixth place at the moment as uh, Forgery continues to try and attack Freddie Cox. That's the, uh, the battle that holds the most attention for those watching from a neutral vantage point for the moment. Well out of shape as he came past the start finish line there was Archie Cole almost dropping it on the exit of the final corner. We have 5.40 to go. Five minutes, 40 seconds. Freddie Cox gets a little wide in the final corner. It's a good line being taken there by Kurt Fordry. But Fordry is unable to get in position to make a run up the hill. Uh, 
as uh, we just see now what's going on elsewhere down the order. Uh, Thomas Dakin's in eighth. Jack Tommy Walsh in ninth. Jack Clayton has moved up to tenth. And uh, Clayton across the line was right behind Tommy Wells. So let's see if we can spot that. 3-3-9 three, three, this will be. And that looks... I think Clayton has made the pass going up the hill because going through the carousel, we could see the blue helmet there, which is Clayton's, appeared to be ahead of a white helmet, which should be that of Tommy Welsh. So we believe that Jack Clayton has taken ninth place. Here we see them over the line. Finley Anderson in front of Thomas Dakins defending seventh place. And Jack Clayton has indeed uh, taken the position from Tommy Welsh, who falls back further as Jake Woodrow draws alongside him in a battle for 10th place. Certainly the rain has put paid to what has been an excellent day for Cole Watt, because he now is back in 12th after having started this race in third. So through the field we go. Sam Faulkner's lead now is 10 seconds with Oscar Wormsey-Jones eight seconds behind, well, seven seconds, excuse me, behind Archie Cole. But it is Freddie Cox still defending fourth place admirably from Kurt Baudry. Baudry getting a really good run off of club corner and it's as close as he's ever been. Balls to the inside, up towards the right-hander up the hill, but the door is shut by Freddie Cox and then Fordry falls out of a move into the spoon. Cox gets a good exit out of the spoon, so he doesn't feel the need to go defensive there. Uh, I could see a blue flag being waved there. Uh, I don't know why that blue flag is out, because it appears as if it is being shown to uh, drivers uh, that are... Yeah, there's nobody a lap down, so I'm not sure why that blue flag is waving uh, over into the carousel there. Uh, so now it probably should be waving because this is Sam Faulkner lapping Cole Watt. Uh, and Archie Potter uh, is uh, back of Cole Watt. So those who are a lap down. So with two and a half minutes to go, uh, Wormsey Jones on the previous lap gained almost half a second on Archie Cole. I believe, I thought it was more than that, um, but it is in fact less. So uh, over the line now is Archie Cole. The ball is so far ahead that what we believe is the last lap time is, uh, is actually not. So uh, that time they were even, so the gap is still seven seconds between Cole and Wormsey Jones. And I believe Kurt Fordry has passed Freddie Cox. Yes, he has. As they come over the line, Kurt Fordry has finally gotten past Freddie Cox for fourth place. And Mark Lawrence is uh, not far behind them. So Mark Lawrence continuing to go very well in the wet conditions here. It's certainly been a less competitive DRS 125 Grand Final than we might have expected, uh, but it's certainly not been lacking in action as a result of the wet weather. Archie Potter gets very wide, almost onto the white line and almost dropping it as a result. Uh, the 3 3 8 of Archie Cole is behind him looking to get by as uh, Sam Faulkner puts a lap there on, I believe that'll be Tommy Welsh. Yes, it is. Uh, Tommy Welsh in 11th place going into the carousel. Faulkner gets by. There are four carts right together on the circuit at the moment. And uh, just trying to see who that is. So here they go over the line, the, the, that quartet. And it's led by Finley Anderson. Behind then is uh, Thomas Dackins. And Jack Clayton and Jake Woodrow are right behind. So that is all for position. And at the moment, Finley Anderson is trying to hold on to his position as the best novice in this race, the best novice plate in this race. So we'll keep an eye on that. So it's Anderson, Dakins, Clayton, and Woodrow. As very, very wide goes Archie Butter through this first couple of corners. As, uh, there's, been, there's a mechanical flag being shown 
to Tommy Welsh in 11th place. So Finley Anderson, it looks like he's holding on to seventh place for the moment. Yes, he is. And side by side with Anderson goes uh, Dakins there and very, very close to a move as we start the last lap. Sam Faulkner is closing in on that quartet. He might be better served backing off. He's got the win in the bag. He is some... Um, well, Archie Cole hasn't even come over the line yet, so that is the gap between the two. Archie Cole very much out of shape as he comes over the line. 16.5 seconds is the gap between Faulkner and Cole. Faulkner has backed off as Clayton makes the move there, looking to get by Thomas Dakins through the carousel. They're side by side on the exit. And a blue flag being waved, which again shouldn't be because that is a battle for position. Uh, so Clayton Cole, uh, well, no, doesn't take the position from Thomas Dakins. He's still behind him as we come across the start finish line. So Finley Anderson holding on to that position. And behind that quartet, here comes Sam Faulkner to win the grand final of DRS 125 here at GYG. So it wasn't all plain sailing for him throughout the course of the day. But in the end, as the, uh, the rain arrives, the, uh, he is able to race away and win at a counter. And Sam Faulkner here is on his cool-down lap, but he's catching the four in front of him who are racing. I hope Sam Faulkner knows he's taken the chequered flag. Yes, he does. Sam Faulkner knows he's taken the chequered flag because he's now backed off of the four that were in front of him. So here comes Finley Anderson. So Archie Gold has finished second. Wormsley Jones has finished third. Here comes Finley Anderson to hold on to seven and will be best novice player of the day. Jake Woodrow got past Jack Clayton on the last lap. So the end result then is Faulkner, Archie Cole, Oscar Wormsley Jones in third, Kurt Fordry in fourth, Freddie Cox in fifth in the end, Mark Lawrence sixth, terrific result for him, and Finley Anderson again, terrific grand final performance to take seventh place as the, uh, the best novice of the day. And uh, in the end, not the easiest of days, but Faulkner completes it in style, winning by 18 seconds in that wet grand final with Archie Cole taking a magnificent second place. And Oscar Wormsley Jones provisionally uh, in third. We'll, we'll get the confirmation uh, on whether or not there was contact uh, between uh, he and Jack Clayton earlier on in that race. Uh, but if not, then he will be in third. Uh, we will get the final word on that from the race control office in a few moments. But Sam Faulkner is once again the winner uh, for round seven of the 2024 Daniel Ricciardo series here at GYG. And our final race of the day is coming up, the DRS 100 Grand Final. To our podium presentation for round seven of the 2024 Daniel Ricciardo series here from GYG, the penultimate round of the championship. And we're going to start with our DRS 45 drivers. But I think first and foremost, we need to really give them all a shout out because it is, of course, their last time that their racing action will feature on the stream. So we please have a round of applause for all of them for providing all the entertainment throughout the course of the season. Well done to all of you involved in the DRS 45 series. I'm going to start our podium presentation now. The third place in that class was Callum White. Podium for Solomon at AEG. Round of applause for our 
DRS Fortified Podium Bright Drivers, please. Time now to celebrate our DRS 125 drivers, and we're going to start with our top novice plate, who was Finlay Anderson. driver was Oscar Wormsley Jones. Yay. And in second place was Archie Cole. that the elements were the friendliest to this particular driver, our winner, Sam Faulkner. And a round of applause for our DRS 100 podium finishers and top novice. And now time for our driver of the day presentation. And uh, hopefully all of you uh, are still uh, at the circuit to receive your award here. Uh, in the DRS 45s, missed out on the overall podium due to a penalty, but nonetheless was superb throughout the course of the day. It was Ethan Guest. not at the circuit, so uh, we will move on to our DRS125 uh, driver of the day, uh, and hopefully he's still here as well, because I believe he may be a bit preoccupied, uh, was Freddie Cox. <laughs> So our, uh, hopefully our 100 driver of the day is uh, going to take centre stage, and that was Freddie Farrell. Congratulations to Freddie, particularly for the hard-fought win in the pre-final, just missing out on the end in the overall podium. But that is it 
for round seven of the 2024 Daniel Ricciardo series. We're done with our Welsh swing. We've got one round to go. We're off to Wilton Mill in just a couple of weeks from now. It's going to be a fantastic finale to the season. And it's been absolutely breathless here. Here's hoping for more of the same as we round off 2024. From me, Ben McPhillips here in North Wales, it's thank you and goodbye.